Hi everyone, my name is Pablo. I'm here with Joe, Juan Chu, Ines, and Amanda. And I'm excited to present you Bruxa. Bruxa aims to improve oral health care and give it more access to everyone to protect their teeth against the damaging effects of nighttime teeth grinding. I'm excited because in the last month, Bruxa already started generating revenue and shipping to customers all across the country. So first, I have to confess that I'm a teeth grinder. I realized this years ago when some friends uh, heard me making strange, strange noises while I was sleeping. So uh, I want to show you a video that uh, a friend of mine took years ago. And I will warn you that this may be a little shocking, but it's important so you understand what's going on. So as you may see, I'm grinding my teeth unconsciously, and I may no even notice the damage that I'm making to my teeth, but actually in the long term, I'm destroying my teeth. So this is not only about me. There is 13% of the adult population that grinds their teeth every night. This is roughly 100 million people worldwide, making this an opportunity with a total addressable market of 5 billion. So the most common treatment for teeth grinding is just to protect your teeth wearing a night guard. The consumers have two main alternatives at this time. The first one is to get a generic night guard that they are cheap and you can buy them from the store. But since then, those are not customized, they could be very uncomfortable and may disrupt your sleep. The other alternative is to get a custom night guard that it's made by the dentist. Those are more, much more uh, comfortable, but could, be, uh, could have much more higher prices. So the problem is that custom night guards are very expensive. Dentists charge on average $500 for each one of these, and this generates two main problems. The first one is that there is a lack of access because not everyone has the money to pay $500 for a custom night guard, so they are forced to get a generic night guard that is uncomfortable and may disrupt your sleep. And in the other hand, uh, there is people that can pay $500 for a night guard, but they are not willing to replace it frequently, making this an anagenic solution because of the accumulation of dental plaque as is reflected in the yellow night guard in the picture. So to solve this problem, we will just make more affordable night guards giving access to the people that don't have the money to pay for one of these, and also giving more uh, affordable replacements for the people that has to wear a night guard every night. We are able to offer lower prices because the main reason that dentists charge so high prices is because they have to cover their chair time, office expenses, and other overhead. So we are able to offer lower prices by just going direct to consumers by only offer, but just only selling directly to them. So how this works? We send them uh, to our customers an impression kit so they can take their own teeth impressions at home. They then return the impressions uh, using a prepaid label. And when we receive those teeth impressions, we just ship them a night guard directly to their door. So we, we created a consumer branded night guard subscription service called Clear Club that offers the most affordable night guard available in the market. Our customers pay $50 and that includes the impression kit and their first night guard and they, they only pay $25 for its renewal with no need to retake their impressions. We are able to offer lower prices after the first unit that we sell because we don't have to retake the impressions, we just ship them a new night guard periodically. So the reason that we're able to market our product without um, additional uh, regulatory approvals is because the materials that we're using for our night guards has already been cleared by the Food and Drug Administration. So the materials that we used are essentially the same ones that are being used by current dental laboratories to fabricate their night guards to be sold by dentists. And also from a legal standpoint of view, our um, what our company does is not actually practicing dentistry as 
our, con uh, our consumers are the ones that are taking their own impressions through the impression kit instructions, um, as opposed to having a dentist um, take their impressions on their behalf. And while we do not interact directly with uh, dental insurers, we thought it was noteworthy to bring this point up. Uh, through multiple conversations with um, multiple dentists in the field, we have discovered that less than 50% of the patients have any insurance coverage for their dental, um, for their night guards. So to illustrate my point further, UCLA students like us um, have an insurance coverage of 60% for their night guards but that's only accessible once every five years. And even with this insurance, UCLA students are still expected to pay an estimate amount of $250 to $385 out of their pocket. So this means that if I were to lose my night guard or if I were to need a replacement within the, um, before the five year period is up, I'll still be stuck with paying the full price for the night guard. Okay, so Brooks is not just an idea. We've actually started sales on our website, joinclearclub.com. Uh, our goal was to see if customers would agree with our value proposition and actually make this purchase online. So far, we've reached 29 customers across the country. Um, they've brought in $1,600 in revenue, with over three quarters of those customers signing up for our subscription option. We advertise using Google and Facebook ads, and in these initial tests, sorry, it's cut off here, but um, we have a con of a customer acquisition cost of $60 to reach those customers. So moving forward, our focus is on reducing the cost to get customers to our website and making sure that more of those who do come to our website are actually making the purchase. Uh, to start off, we'll be bringing on a branding development firm to help us develop our Clear Club brand. And we'll, in the coming months, we'll list our product on Amazon to get in front of more customers and further refine our social and search advertising. Um, finally, we'll partner with dentists, influencers, and current customers to reach other people who would benefit from referrals to our product. So Clear Club will be the first branded affordable night guard subscription service. Compared to the dentist option, our product is the exact same product, just much more affordable. Compared to this generic of boil and bite device, it's much more comfortable and it doesn't disrupt your sleep. There are other dental labs out there who sell night guards online, however their prices are much higher and they don't offer a subscription. In general, these labs are targeting dentists as their main customer and they haven't established a consumer brand in this space. So our competitive advantage will come by establishing a establishing a strong brand, just like Quip did in the toothbrush industry, by offering a base and renewal type of product in a subscription model. In Quip's case, the base was an uh, electric toothbrush, and they offered renewal brush heads. In our case, the base is the dental impression model, which allows us to offer renewal night guards without requiring people to retake their dental impressions. Right now, there is no Quip in this space. We have the chance to be that brand. Pablo is the CEO of Bruxa. He has a background in private equity, venture capital, and teeth grinding. I'm the CTO. <laughs> My background is in medical device development. We worked with Wan Chu, Amanda, and Ines to help identify the legal and regulatory risk of this company. And we've assembled a team of advisors, including a dentist with experience building startups and leaders from the medical device industry. Finally, we recognize the need to bring on experts to our team with experience in digital marketing. Our, our financial projections are dependent on reducing our customer acquisition costs to a sustainable level. Um, in these projections, we target having $6.5 million in revenue by 2023, with a third of that revenue coming from subscription customers. Currently, we're raising our seed round of funding, um, and we'll be using these funds to further develop our brand, to advertise it, and to bring on this digital marketing expertise to our team. So just to recap it all, um, We've talked about it's a large market with 13% of the population grinding their teeth at night. Over our competitors, we'll have the brand and we'll establish switching costs so that customers choose us. Um, in doing so, we'll be able to scale quickly because this is not a capital intensive business. And we've demonstrated from our early sales that it's a clear value um, and that there's a real need in the market with real customers. So just to conclude, I wanted to play you a clip from one of our first customers that we spoke with. Um, he had never worn a night guard before, Here's what he had to say after using our product. It's definitely, I feel, I feel good in the morning and that's huge for me. I have to wake up at four or five in the morning and, and being able to wake up without um, a little bit of a dull headache sometimes, I, it's, it's different. It just feels, my life feels like nice when I wake up. It's good. 
Bruxa aims to make teeth protection more accessible and affordable for everyone so that more teeth grinders can say that they feel nice when they wake up too. Thank you very much. analogies to the toothbrush one and to the shaving club and things of that nature. I think what's different here is is that everyone understands, you know, about shaving, everybody understands about brushing their teeth, but people don't realize that they grind their teeth generally until a dentist tells them that they've been grinding their teeth. I mean, it's kind of rare that people are taking videos of, of themselves or their friends <laughs> grinding their teeth. So, the I don't know, but <laughs> I mean, the problem is, is that it seems to me that you're going to have to eventually form some kind of alliance with dentists because they're sort of the funnel here. They identify a problem, and either the dentist is going to begin to lower their prices um, or you have to have some kind of relationship because I just don't see them, you know, sponsoring and referring people to you. I see them first trying to capture the business. Maybe you could just speak to that issue. Right. So uh, as you alluded to, I mean, our product right now is requiring that people know that they're already grinding their teeth. Um, so right now our customers are coming from two main segments. It's people who already have a night guard or people who have worn this generic device and are looking for a more comfortable uh, protection for their teeth. Um, in the long term, we could see, yes, actually partnering with the dentist. The dentist is offering a, a higher quality service when they're actually the ones doing the fitting and they're doing the check and they take the impressions. What our, how our product would fit into that mold is, is that we would stock our impression kit at the dentist's office. And if the patient can't pay for the dentist's uh, higher price offering, the dentist can at least has something to offer them that's better than the generic device. Right, but with some kind of rev share, right, for the dentist, right? Uh, yeah, just wanted to add uh, to a point of Joe, like, and we were talking with our advisor that is a dentist, and he was proposing let's start doing <coughs> this with dentists too. And our answer for that was if we go to dentists uh, now, they will ask, okay, how many customers we have, and we're building that customer base and having more audios like that, saying like that our product is good, so then we can just start moving to a partnership with dentists. And, and yeah. No, I understand you'd rather go from a position of strength, but I'm just <coughs> saying ultimately when you do your financials, yep. you're going to have to build in some kind of rev share with the dentist if you want to try to capture that yep. market. And basically that there are some dentists that are uh, telling to their customers when they can't, enough, they can't afford the $500 dentist, some of them tell them like, okay, uh, just take for now like uh, these generic night guards. But now we hope that they can say the same, but with our product that is more mm -hmm. accessible, so they can have a more quality protection instead of going to that solution. So, Lowell, I like the idea that you said everybody understands shaving because they do now. But when we <laughs> when we started Dollar Shave Club, everybody said, "How are you ever going to make money selling dollars for a razor? I mean, uh, razors for a dollar in a box, right? So you have low frequency, low value. Here you have low frequency, sort of mid value." So can we go back to your revenue slide there for a second? Because you ended this presentation saying this was a very large market, right? And this is the one you mean? Yeah, that's the one I mean. And you show top line revenue of six and a half million dollars in your fifth year, right? So I'm not entirely, entirely sure how you're thinking this is a large market and you're going to build the first consumer facing brand, the quip, if you will, of this world and still only make six and a half million dollars in five years. Yeah, um, yeah so um, first, uh, these numbers are only taking into account the US, so the total addressable market that we were considering is all around the world because there is no difference between teeth grinders in every part of the world. <laughs> and, and we have like uh, uh, the capabilities to scale in every other country because this is a low capex uh, business and we just only require to put the same machines that we are using to manufacture the night guards in all the other countries that have lower regulation base than the FDA here. Uh, so we just want to be conservative in those projections, but we think that we can achieve a, a, much more, a much more bigger market if we just expand to other countries. All right, so how many, and look, I'll put this on the table now, one of the highest and simultaneously lowest moments of my life is 
the first night my wife and I, when we were still dating, got into bed and both of us put in our mouth guards and that was the moment <laughs> we realized like we, are some, made for each other. we, we might just be made for each other because that's, that's an awkward conversation to have otherwise. Um, so look, I, I love the idea because I'm one of the people that spends $800 or whatever it is every time this thing wears out, but uh, it seems to me that you are likely to be able to reach more than or sell more than 179,000 night guards per year. So how many are, is that per person per year? In your model, the 179,000 you're showing here. Yeah, th that is the the total number of night guards that we sold per year. Right. And, uh, how many consumers does yeah. that represent? Is that two? Is it, are they buying two? Two per year. Just two, two per, per year. year. That's correct. Two yeah, per we're, year. we're recommending that consumers replace it on a six month replacement cycle. Although we offer a more frequent option of six or seven months. Does the price go down if they buy more frequently? No. Okay. And that that revenue since that is is uh, has a a uh, 37 percent uh, base of uh, uh, recurring revenue, so that is like around 2.4 million. That is recurring revenue, and the rest are like new customers, mm -hmm. and those are our subscribers, okay. like two per year. Okay. Um, we've been here a long time, so Greg, thanks for sharing that with us. It uh, <laughs> got everybody awake. <laughs> <Close down>. um, <laughs> I'm curious now with all, what, all of my new best friends in the audience yeah. that I share these personal <laughs> details <laughs> with. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, good, good. I'm kind of curious, how many of you up there use this or, or have had a, one of these guards made for you using your technique there? Do all of you have it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 They don't have a problem, but they still have them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they should be wearing them. Okay. Right. Uh, so, basic. So what are, what are the issues with respect to making your own impression? I mean, what are the fail rates or? Um, <clears throat> yes, I can answer that one. Um, there are already the Occidental liner companies, such as, such as the Candid and um, Smile, Smile Direct Club. They have proven that the public can make their teeth impression by themselves. And actually, based on our response of our customer, they have said that this process is quite simple. It, the whole process can be done like in less than five minutes. And <coughs> actually, we have concern about the fail process of that. And if you feel as a customer feel, we will send them a new one for free. And um, we, based on our uh, early experience, we think that uh, one of 10 of the impressions needs to be redone. And we have already calculated that cost in our model. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.